For Aslan Media, this is Reza Aslan. It's Tuesday, June 19th. Well, Egypt has a new president. In a historic election over the weekend, Mohamed Morsi, a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, was elected Egypt's first freely elected president. Now, this is a remarkable event. We need to stop for a moment and congratulate the Egyptian people for a, a profound transformation of their country. I mean, if you think about it, not a year and a half ago, simply being a member of the Muslim Brotherhood was enough to land you in jail forever. And now, a member of the Muslim Brotherhood is the president of Egypt. That's profound, that's remarkable, we should congratulate all of Egypt for that transformation. But of course, there are some challenges now. First of all, Morsi's opponent, Ahmed Shafiq, who really represents the Mubarak contingent of the Egyptian electorate, has yet to actually concede. Now, there will be official results on Thursday, and those will probably confirm Morsi's victory, but considering Ahmed Shafiq's, let's say, security credentials, it's not exactly clear whether he's going to concede all that easily, despite what the numbers say. Secondly, at the same time that Morsi was winning this election, SCAF, the ruling military council, was moving forward on a couple of very controversial decisions that seemed to, well, in the minds of some people, not just reverse the revolution, but more or less negate the elections. First of all, they dissolved the parliament. Now, this was because of some technical part of the law that said you can't run as an independent candidate if you were being backed by a party, and it turns out that a number of those independent ca candidates were being backed by the Muslim Brotherhood, which of course, along with the Salafists, took some 50% of the seats in the parliament. Therefore, those seats have to be given up and the entire parliament has to be dissolved. Whole new elections are going to have to be uh, taking place uh, to elect a brand new parliament. Secondly, at the same time that they did this, SCAF, without really telling anyone, created an addendum to the constitution giving them enormous powers. For instance, the president will not be the commander-in-chief of the military. He will not be in charge of foreign policy. Essentially, most of the executive authority that one would expect a president to have, SCAF unilaterally gave itself. And by the way, they also said that they will reconvene the National Defense Council, which assembles only during emergencies. In other words, for a lot of Egyptians, this looks a lot like a kind of soft military coup, and perhaps not all that soft. Now, in Egypt and across the world, these decisions have been widely interpreted as the death of the Egyptian revolution. We're seeing a lot of depression on the streets of Tahrir. And in fact, there have been more protests called for SCAF's decisions. But you're hearing it in the media that the Egyptian revolution and the promise that it made is over. But I think we may be ringing this death knell a little bit early. As Wael Ghonim once told me, it, it, revolutions are not events, they are processes. And this is a process that has a very long way to go until it has the outcome that everybody hopes. Now, let's make something very clear. It seems that SCAF is not going to go anywhere. The military in Egypt is just too powerful, and they enjoy their authority way too much to just simply give it up as easily as everyone thought that they would. They are sticking around, they're going to have a political role, and there's very little that I think can be done about that. The question here is, as Egypt develops, as it evolves in it, on its democratic trajectory, is it going to become Pakistan, or is it going to become Turkey? What do I mean by that? Is it going to use the Pakistan model, wherein the military allows for a patina of democracy, a representative government, a prime minister, a president, but in reality the military is in charge, the military calls the shots, they're the ones who control foreign policy, and in fact they're the ones who control the purse strings. Is that the kind of Egypt that we're about to see? Or are we about to see a Turkey model? wherein you see a slow process whereby the military loses its uh, political authority step by step, little by little, through constitutional changes that are made through the democratic process. 
through the will of the people as they begin to have more faith in their elected representatives, even the sort of mildly Islamist representatives uh, that Mohammed Morsi and some of the Muslim Brotherhood represent. Is it going to be Turkey or is it going to be Pakistan? Well, my bet is for Turkey. I am not nearly as pessimistic as so many other people are because I trust the Egyptian people. I know that they will not allow the horror and the bloodshed and the sacrifice that they have made over these last two years to lead to nothing. Already, as I said, there are widespread demonstrations being planned all across the country to protest SCAF's decisions. These kids are not going anywhere. They are not about to simply abandon their hopes and their aspirations because SCAF refuses to give up power. As one young Egyptian revolutionary told me, we know the way back to Tahrir Square. Indeed, they do. So, before we talk about the death of the Egyptian revolution, perhaps we should give it a little bit of time to actually evolve. After all, we in the United States have been doing this for about 250 years, and frankly, we still don't have it right. For Aslan Media, this is Reza Aslan.